When I found out that there was a Star Wars game for the Famicom, the 8-bit Japanese equivalent of the NES, I was fairly excited. I thought it sounded pretty cool that they made a Star Wars game that wasn't anything like the one that came out on the NES. So I went out and I tried it. Little did I know that it would turn out to be one of the worst fucking games ever made. I'm not kidding. This game is one of the most aggravating, annoying, frustrating, pissy, glitched out pieces of shit I've ever played in my life. You know how I complained about that Death Star level with all the spikes and the NES version of Star Wars? And you know how I complained about the Empire Strikes Back game for the NES? Well, guess what? That's nothing. That's gravy. That's cake when you compare it to this fucking game. In fact, this game is so fucking difficult that I literally could not beat it without save states. I swear to God. Normally, I hate save states. I hate cheats. I like to play a game fair and square, and at least at the medium difficulty, if not high. I don't like a free ride, but this game is fucking impossible. It's impossible. Let me tell you what. If anybody out there can beat this game without cheats, without any fucking save states or any of that shit, I will nominate you for sainthood. Or at least knighthood, anyway. So let's get into it. Star Wars for the Famicom. Normally I would select Pro Mission, but this game is just too fucking much, so I'm just going to stick with Novice. Although I can't read Japanese, this cinematic actually looks pretty faithful to the film. But just wait, it gets a hell of a lot worse. So we start out on Tatooine, and the graphics actually look pretty good. I don't know why the hell the Jawas are stealing R2 from freaking Luke since they sold it to him in the movie, but anyway, who gives a shit? But although the graphics are good, I do find it kind of odd that Luke has black hair instead of blonde, especially since he had blonde hair in the cutscene. Who knows, maybe the Japanese game designers were colorblind, or crazy. Now at first glance, the game may look like a lot of fun, but don't be deceived. One of the biggest problems comes up almost right away, and that problem is hit detection. Or should I say lack of hit detection? Simply put, this game has some of the worst hit detection I've ever seen in any game ever. Look at this shit. The lightsaber is clearly hitting the enemy, and yet it does not register. Who the fuck programmed this shit? And thanks to this shitty game flaw, you will lose lives again, and again, and again! Speaking of lives, you only get three. That's right, three lives to complete this whole fucking game. There's no life bar, there's no continues, there's no passwords, there is nothing. So if you fuck up three times, no matter what, in any part of the game, you fucking lose. That's it. Okay, to be fair, the game does throw you a one-up every now and then, but so fucking what? They're so few and far between that you'll probably end up getting killed before you can collect any of them. Worse, this game is long. There's 13 stages and multiple boards within each stage. So why the fuck couldn't they have given you at least a health bar, or maybe two or three hits, or maybe even a continue or two, or maybe even a password system? But oh no, they had to make it as hard as a fucking cement block. Jesus Christ, even Ghost and Goblins had two hits and unlimited continues, and that fucking Terminator game for the NES that had a life bar and three lives, but oh no, not this fucking game. But if you think that sucks, just wait, it gets even worse. So you enter the sand crawler, kill a few more enemies, go up a ladder and find none other than... Darth Vader. What the fuck is he doing here? Shouldn't he be on the Death Star? Oh, whatever. Anyway, you fight the bastard. Oh, but it gets a lot worse. Guess what happens after you hit him once? That's right, he turns into a fucking scorpion. Oh, and while we're at it, let's not overlook another example of Namco's wonderful hit detection. So apparently one of Vader's previously unknown force powers is to turn into a fucking Animorph. But that's not the only thing he turns into, oh no! He also turns into a pterodactyl, a big gay version of Jaws, and a fucking Wampa. Oh yeah, and he also fights you regularly and then later on shoots laser beams out of his lightsaber. Isn't that neat? Oh. My. Fuck. You know, I don't know what kind of drugs these game designers were on, but whatever they were, I hope to god I never fucking take them because I don't want to permanently go insane. So after rescuing R2-D2 from the Sandcrawler, Luke escapes via land speeder to Moss Eisley, which takes all about two seconds, just like the movie, right? Oh, and I love how he drives the fucking speeder right into the cantina, so they don't allow droids, but I guess crashing your fucking vehicle right into the bar is just fine. So after that, you escape from Moss Eisley, and here's where the game really jumps the shark, the big gay pink shark. You go into hyperspace, and then you emerge from it and get into a dogfight above a planet, all well and good. But the only problem is the controls in this level are very crippled. The crosshairs are extremely sensitive, and even if you push up or down a little, you'll go flying up and down. Even worse than that, though, is that you only get three shields to protect yourself, and if you don't activate the shields at the exact right time, you will get killed and lose a life. Oh, by the way, I hope you like these dogfights, because every time you leave a fucking planet, you're gonna have to get into one. Isn't that great? You just have to do the same shit over and over and over again. 
But I guess the word repetitive is not in the game designer's vocabulary now, is it? So you finally win the day and end up going back to a planet that looks strangely enough like Tatooine. And then you end up on this weird planet. I don't know what the fuck it has to do with the Star Wars movies. Is it Tatooine again or Alderaan or who the fuck knows? I mean, what sense does this make? What does this have to do with the movies? It doesn't tell you anything. You just go around like an asshole. But the one thing I do know is that you get the blaster. And guess what? It fucking sucks as a weapon. Look at this piece of shit. It looks like it jams every half second. Oh no, you can't fire the blaster repeatedly like in Star Wars, the NES, or Empire Strikes Back, or any of the other games. No, it fucking jams every half second. Just great. Oh, and good luck hitting any fucking thing with the weapon. Time it right and you'll hit something. Time it wrong and you'll end up fucking dead. From here on in, the game becomes completely fucking senseless. You end up fighting Vader in some Egyptian temple, and then you go off to a water world. That's right, a fucking water world. What in the fuck does this have to do with the movie? Jesus Christ, I half expect to see Kevin Costner floating around here somewhere, pissing into a fucking still. And why the fuck is this water shimmering rainbow colors? Did somebody dump toxic waste into it or what? And after that, we end up on the Death Star. So that's just great. One minute we're freely adapting the game and putting whatever the fuck we want in it, the next we're adapting it faithfully. Could we please just make up our fucking minds, huh? Could we just decide whether or not we want to adapt this game freely, or fucking stay true to the movie? But just because the game designers got the locale right for once, doesn't mean they're done torturing you. Oh no, guess what? Just for shits and giggles, they decided to turn the whole Death Star into a fucking maze. That's right, a big fucking maze. So let me get this straight, Namco. You expect me to get through this whole fucking maze level on three fucking lives without getting lost and without getting killed three times. Oh yeah, that's really realistic. I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to get a sense of deja vu. Deja vu. Deja, deja, vu. deja vu. If by some miracle you manage to get past that nightmare, next you end up on Hoth. That's right, Hoth, from The Empire Strikes Back. You know what? I give up trying to make sense of this game. Trying to make sense of this game is like trying to make sense of ten jigsaw puzzles during an earthquake. And the lunacy continues! Guess how you get rid of this refugee from the Lord of the Rings? Guess. I bet you'll never guess in a million years. Can you kill him with your lightsaber? No, that doesn't work. Can you kill him with your force powers? No, that doesn't work. Can you jump over him? No, that doesn't work. No, what you have to do is call up C-3PO in your start menu and have him negotiate with this guy to go away. Barring the fact that I don't speak Japanese, how in the fuck could the game designers ever expect me to figure this out? What, do they think I'm fucking psychic? Do they think that the knowledge is just gonna fall out of the sky and land in my fucking lap? Come on, give me a fucking break! But remarkably enough, this is not the worst part of the level. This is the worst part of the level. How the fuck am I supposed to get across this water? Am I supposed to jump across it? Whoops, no! Or maybe I'll just wait for a fucking boat to come along. How about that? Nope. How about Leia? Nope. R2-D2? Nope. Obi-Wan? Nope. No, you have to call C-3PO to summon a fucking whale to get across. A whale? A fucking whale? You have to call a whale to cross the fucking water? Are you insane? What the fuck? Is this Star Wars or fucking Moby Dick? Oh, and if you don't jump on the whale's back just right, you fall through it and die. Great programming there. If someone told you there was a Star Wars game where you literally had to ride the back of a fucking whale to get to Echo Base, would you believe them or would you send them to the nearest fucking rubber room? Not to mention the fact that you don't even need the fucking whale. That's right, you can levitate right over the fucking water and land on Echo Base on the other side. So why the fuck put a whale there in the first place? And once again, how the fuck could the video game designers ever expect you to figure this out? It's not like there's a big fucking sign on the ice that says, Oh, go call C-3PO and he'll bring a whale and that whale will take you across the water to Echo Base. If you still want to play this game after it pulls this kind of shit on you, then I pity you. I genuinely do.